Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and in this rather detailed lesson, let's look at a very cool approach towards playing the piano which is going to allow you to play the melody, the rhythm and the harmony in just one hand. That's going to be the right hand. So it's a very powerful technique and it definitely allows your left hand to obviously do a lot more than what it could. It's not tied down to playing just block chords or simple arpeggios, which anyway sound muddy, right? So I tend to always play my chords from middle C on the piano around there, not too high because it can sound too sharp and sort of confuse the listener uh, from the vocalist. I'll keep it around my middle C and anytime I go lower I try to focus more on bass lines and rhythm patterns and so on and so forth. So the bass hand or the left hand needs to get or can get freed up a lot to do the bass duties and the drum duties following the, the groove of the song and not clutter up the chords. So this technique sort of helps both purposes. It allows you to play all aspects of music in a nice crystal clear way and also give your left hand a lot more opportunities to to play right so let's get started as always we take a scale to begin a lesson we'll take g major scale in this lesson so g f sharp e d c b a g okay so this is your g major scale so get used to that perhaps you could write it down and the first goal which we are going to try and achieve is to play the scale using chords in a simple arpeggio pattern going up and down just going up and down the scale so normally we do that quite often right we go g a b c d e f sharp g g f sharp e d c b we have like a fingering technique and whatnot. But what I'm going to encourage you to do now is to kind of play the scale with the melody line of the scale pretty much at the extreme fingers. That's your pinky and your ring finger. So you go something with these fingers. So there's no real finger technique because you have to accommodate the chords which are going to be coming up, right? So the first thing I want to talk about, yeah, is we are going to practice playing the scale up and down just like we normally do in the classical piano and the tried and tested systems, but we are going to play it with the chords backing the melody. It's going to sound like this and then we are, I'm going to break it down for you uh, in detail. So it'll be something like... If you observe, I was actually singing the top note of every chord. I did G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. And each of the melody notes which I just sang was just the scale degrees going up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 octave and then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 going down the scale. Okay. And if you heard it right, you may have observed that I was doing it with a lot of harmony, with a lot of rhythmic movement. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment if you'd like to learn something else or something more in the field of music. Okay, so let's get started now to decipher what I played now. What I'm doing is with the top melody G or with the top note G played by the pinky finger, I'm going to limit our study for this lesson to just the one, the four and the five chords. That's the one major, the four major and the five major. As we know in a major scale, there are seven uh, buildable triads and one, four and five are major or positive happy sounding chords. Two, three, six are minor or sadder sounding chords. And the seven is diminished, which we rarely use, at least for normal pop kind of music. So. In this lesson, we are just going to look at the 1, 4 and 5, the major chords, okay? Let, let's figure out what the major chords are. 
G major, G B D. Okay, and it's important to write this chord down in a circle. Maybe if you have a book, you could write it down in a circle so that you can figure out all the close inversions, which is G B D, B D G, D G B. Right? These are all the close positions which you are going to really need to know in this lesson. Okay? G B D, B D G. D G B and all these three shapes of the G major chord kind of sound the same, but the top end of each of these chords is something which you need to observe. In this version of G major, the D tends to stand out because it is a higher frequency, so it sort of rings more, it resonates more to our ears, and whatever the case is. we seem to hear that predominantly so la that's d la that's g that's b okay so hence it is very very important to learn all these three shapes you can bring out the melody line in the chord so that's d g b okay so that's your one chord g major Similarly you have the 4 chord and you have the 5 chord. The 4 chord is C major which is C E G as you may already know and let's build the shapes C E G E G C G C E right? So G stands out C stands out E stands out right? So that's your C major chord and last but not least we have the 5 chord or the dominant chord as some people call it the D major chord which is D F sharp A this is the 5 chord of the G major scale D F sharp A F sharp A D A D F sharp these are all the shapes of the D major chord there are three shapes for any triad at least in close position so you go A is on top, D is on top, F sharp's on top. Right? Try to even sing it so you're more aware when you do play the melody. Okay, that's pretty much all the information you're going to need theoretically, at least in this lesson. So what what I uh, what I'm aiming at now is if you touch the note G, okay, and you touch it. with uh with the extreme finger either the ring or the pinky the fingers to the right of your right hand you need to support this g with a chord and what chord will work best with the g a chord which has g isn't it so a great chord to start off with would be the g major chord the namesake chord it has you know g b d but we need to invert it or we need to play it in such a shape so that the g is on top because our intention is to go that's our intention right so we need our root or the melody line on the top so i will find a shape of g major which has g at the top by top i mean right of your keyboard or the highest sounding pitch for your ear so that would be b d g isn't it b d g so now we've made g to stand out now our next mission is to kind of go up to the second note a and now you can try to figure this out on your own a is the next melody note it needs to be supported by a harmony or a chord what chord has a in it well a lot of chords have a in it but in this domain of 1 4 and 5 which i have chosen for the lesson it's the d major chord isn't it d f sharp a and i've played it in such a way that a is at the top end so g b d g a d f sharp a and now i want to play the third note third degree which is b now you could again try this out what chord has b in it the g chord no other chord has b in it at least among the 1 4 5 isn't it so you go b d g b d g b b stands out okay now let me proceed towards c 
C is very obvious. You have C major, but I'm playing it as E G C. Let's play the first four notes together. G A B C, and I'm playing it just as a block triad. G with G major chord, A with D major chord, B with G major chord, C with C major chord. Okay, let's move onward. You have the D. Now with D you have two chords which work with it, right? You have, you can come back to G major or you can do D major. So this you have to decide which one you want. You have two options within the one four five realm. Uh, I'm going to choose G B D G major the tonic. So you go G A B C D, but I'm playing it as G B D. Okay, then you have E. The only chord among the one four five which has E in it is C, C major, which I'm playing as G C E. Ba ba ba. E stands out, and the last note or the leading tone F sharp, which wants to yearn towards the tonic, just has one triad which has F sharp in it, right? That's the D major chord, which I need to play now as A D F sharp, and finally. We end the puzzle with B D G, which is where we started. So let's just go up and down using these chords which we've mapped out. G A, playing it four times. B G major. C C major. D G major. E G C major. F sharp melody. D major and G. Okay, we'll also go down later. So, also what I'd urge you to do at this stage is just to know what chord you're playing. Play the root of the chord in the bass. So that's whatever the chord may be. G, C, and D. Just play the roots in the bass. D major, right? G major, C major, G major, C major, D major. G major down G A D C G major C major G major D major G so i have just used the 1 the 4 and the 5 uh, major chords and i am able to happily play the scale now we need to make the scale move out or move a bit like and get some rhythm so on the piano what do we love to do the most arpeggios Right, so the arpeggio pattern which I have set up for you is H L M L, which I think is quite catchy, quite popular. You'll find a lot of solo pianists playing that way. So you go. Let's just study one chord, B D G. The H is G, the L is B, the M is D. That's essentially the middle note from your vision. High, low, middle, low. That's your pattern. Do you need to sort of practice that and get that into your, send it into your subconscious bank of stuff. So, H L M L H, right? M L H L M L H L M. So, another thing I like to do to bring out the melody even more. Some people would play the melody note louder. I think that's a little bit annoying or a bit scary sometimes. So I would just want to hold the high note with this finger. So this one finger needs to hold on to the high, while the other fingers create that arpeggio rhythmic pattern. Hold the high, hold the high. Okay. And now we can start climbing with the same pattern. H L M L, G major, C chord, the D chord, and end. Okay, let's do that again. So what what have I done now? G is sticking out. That's your melody. This is your chord supporting the melody. G major chord. Why does it support it so well? Because it has G in it. Obviously, it'll work really nicely. So G. A, B, C, D, E, the sixth, 
F sharp, G. Okay, I have a few finger tips as well. If you are encountering a black note, maybe use your ring finger. If you are encountering a white note, maybe use your pinky. Right? But I'd leave the fingering to you for you to explore because every scale on the piano is a little different. In this tutorial, we are considering G major for our study. But yeah. you can do it for other scales and maybe other types of scales perhaps a g harmonic minor you know ah sounds beautiful okay so we let me not get carried away let's just stick with the major for now so now we've had this uh, uh, this ab ability to play up and down let me show that for you guys once more so that we are all on the same page g a b c and you see in the left hand i'm also just trying to do something because the left hand sleeping right so let it do something I'm, if you can hold the triad or at least the roots of the triad or maybe the root and the fifth whatever you want this lesson is more about the right hand so the left hand should also do something right and this whole the whole point of learning the right hand really hard and practicing really well is so that the left hand your conscious efforts go towards your left hand eventually to do all the cool stuff which you can do at least with groove and bass so you go g d g again c d melody e melody f sharp melody g down one more time little faster right so that's your scale going up and down i think it sounds quite beautiful right i i like that a little a lot better than just doing faster 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 i don't know that i don't feel that for some reason okay so now what i want to do is let's just do a case study with a melody we've just we've seen the scale up and down so the way i look at it is the melody is going to be the tune in the pinky finger but the or the ring finger but those notes are going to skip it's not going to be linear if it was linear it'll just be a scale exercise so if you take a melody like everyone's favorite i would imagine twinkle twinkle little star you go 1556654433221 okay those are the scale degrees on g g d d e e d c c b b a a g now as you can possibly here it doesn't sound very rich it doesn't sound full so i want to get that technique you know which we learned earlier playing the scale up and down into this song so let's do that so let's try it g again this is your g hold for the melody note g you're going to press b d g so let's see how that works twinkle try to sing twin don't lose the melody twinkle twin now i have to skip to the 5 that's going to be a little tricky because i have to jump from the root to the 5th but that's the fun about it right twinkle jump twinkle and i'm still playing the g major chord because that's the chord i have for d twinkle little star so i did little is e and double e because it's little little star star now i don't want to repeat star so i'll do star i want to hold on to that star how i wonder what you are okay so now you may be thinking yeah I have a triad having three notes 
but then I'm still using only three fingers. I can actually bring in sneak in another finger and you'll see why that's going to be very very important in this case so if you do twinkle this you can survive with five with with just three fingers but then when i shift to the five so for the higher twinkle which is the d why not play the same chord GBD but you can take the melody note and bring it back below so you get more sort of arpeggiating options which are non melody notes so if I do twinkle 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 so you have a lot more options twinkle quite like that so twinkle this I'm playing as three notes. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. See how interesting the word star sounds, right? It's rather boring because you just sing star and then don't do much after that. Little star. So at that gap where I'm not singing or where there's a gap in the melody, I'm still having some fun with these other fingers arpeggiating over the same chord which still works harmonically awesome. So I go twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I, you can go back to three note chords there, three note triads. So I hope you're understanding the difference. There's three note triad and a four note triad. But a four note triad doesn't really have four unique notes. One of the notes has to get repeated. The triad still means three. So how I won. So if you're uncomfortable using four notes for the triad, I would advise you to maybe just start with three. It should work out fine. How I wonder what you are. At the word R, I may want to spread out my triad and add one more note. Ah. Okay, let's do that again with again just with right hand. The left hand sleeping right now. Twinkle, twinkle, little. How I wonder what you You pretty much have your rhythm going, your chords going, chords are moving and I hope you're hearing we've not lost the melody at all, haven't we, right? So the last thing in this tutorial which I want to leave you guys with is sort of like the icing on the cake where rhythm is going to start taking over. So you got your melody, you got your chords and then everyone's favorite comes to the party, rhythm. So... If you observe what I'm playing right now, I'm pretty much playing it either as you can count it as eighth notes or sixteenth notes, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and so right now I'm counting it as eighth notes. But what if we think of it in a triplet world? The melody is pretty much on quarter notes, isn't it? Twinkle, three, four. It's pretty much on quarter notes or crotchets as we call it or on the pulse. It's not dividing the beat. So what do we do? Let's try triplets. So that'll be something like Twinkle, twinkle, star, something like that where you divide by three. Let's see how that sounds. Star. So if you like the three feel, works. Wonder what you. So these are eighth note triplets, right? If you like, you can play it with sixteenth note triplets. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Turn triplet to 
What you could do is you don't have to play all the divisions of the beat. You can knock off a few, like probably something like duck, tug, duck, tug, duck, tug, duck, tug, duck, tug, duck, tug, duck. That's like a gallop, I guess you could say. So maybe something like. One E and a two E and a. So it's a sixteenth note feel, but the E is missing. One E and a two. So now, if you can phrase this with the melody, tang taga dang taga dang taga dang taga dang taga dang taga dang, that's the idea. right so if you go back to the beginning of the lesson i actually tried to demonstrate a few of these things uh, as best as i could so yeah so this is a, a very cool approach if you ask me on the piano to play everything music has to offer except the lyrics obviously you can't play lyrics on the piano but yeah you you do melody you do chords you do rhythm a pattern unique stuff just in one hand and the, it'll make your playing a lot more professional i can definitely vouch for that a lot of people would would want to work with you you know and also your left hand can have a mind of its own as it should be on on this amazing instrument it's a it's a crazy instrument for developing music right so you'd rather free up things as best as you can and optimize things as best as you can and in this instance the right hand is doing a lot of things so it's really making your left hand well we haven't i keep talking about the left hand we haven't talked about the left hand in this video but i hope you're getting some ideas you know if you can get the right hand sorted with all the three elements melody rhythm and harmony imagine what this other hand can do right the left hand should not sleep uh so don't get me wrong that's not my intention the left hand has to do something so the left hand will start approaching its own world of ideas once the right hand sort of takes over it almost is like a muscle memory so a common approach when we play melodies on the piano is we are consciously thinking of the melody but if you can practice the melody so well that that itself is sort of second nature i think your music will move forward the right the right way on the piano Right guys again this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music I hope you found the lesson useful and if you did please subscribe to our YouTube channel leave us a comment if you'd like to learn something more and more importantly do share the video with all your musician friends on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media platforms you use and it'll help our channel go a great great deal forward right cheers <laughs>